Back here in Pelham and alongside me is uh, Ron Rovitz from Bus League Hockey. And Ron, for the people back home who may not be aware of exactly what Bus League Hockey is, fill them in a little bit. Uh, basically the site since the day we started has been uh, just a place for hockey that doesn't get a whole ton of coverage. You know, the Southern Professional League, the Federal League, the NAHL, some obscure junior leagues, and then even some senior league stuff up in Canada. So just, you know, stuff that you aren't getting to see or read about in the papers or see on TV every night, and more so than trying to do, like, game coverage and recaps because anybody can look at a box score and write something up on that, trying to deliver the behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, and it's not always going to be pretty in minor league hockey, but that's what we've tried to deliver, and I think it's been a really fun project about a little more than a year and a half into it. And what started off the journey of uh, getting things going for Bus League Hockey? Where was where was kind of the epicenter to start things off for the uh, for the website? For us, I think it started uh, actually in the Federal League just because of all the drama that goes on there with co teams constantly folding and starting up. And I think it actually was the saga of the Cornwall Nationals where a team that folded in the middle of the season and it just kind of dawned on us like, <laughs> we have to cover this because this is just a riot that there's this professional hockey league that is somehow now in its 10th year that almost yearly would have teams fold or fold in the middle of the season or move in the off season and one time had an entire team that tried <laughs> to play its entire schedule outside and so just like those stories that's kind of what we want to share you know the, the fun side that is more than just seeing the people play. And this is actually a, a pretty big moment for you now this is your first ever Southern Professional Hockey League game. And you've, you've covered the SPHL in, in, a, in a facet for at least the last year and a half, two years. Uh, overall impressions after one period of play and your, your first ever SPHL game attended? It's good hockey. There's good speed to it. The guys get up and down the ice in a hurry. There's no doubt about that. A lot of passion, good hitting, crisp passing, some guys who can really fire the puck. And, I mean, you saw in those first two goals for Birmingham, if a team makes a mistake, they're going to bury them. They're certainly very good players, you know, and I, your cousin is out there, one of them, a lot of guys with that Division One experience. So yeah. it's been impressive hockey. And, you know, you mentioned first SPHL game. I was thinking on my way to the rink tonight, it's been a while since I've been at a minor league game. Of course, <laughs> I, the last three years I lived in Amarillo, Texas, and so it was watching junior hockey a lot. And probably the last official minor league game was being back home in Michigan probably about three or four years ago to see a Griffins game. So go. it's good to be back in a minor league barn and watching the, the minor pros go at it. And, and a lot of people might not know, uh, you know, outside of what you do for the website uh, and what you do for Bus League Hockey, but uh, you've got your own experience in the world of hockey from obviously your time uh, living up in Muskegon and being a fan of the uh, the teams up there, but uh, you also were once the uh, the voice of not just a team, but a couple of teams down in, uh, in a quite obscure junior hockey league. Yeah, it started off after I left Michigan, went out to Montana, and the year I got there, they got a Western States Hockey League team, and eventually it became a NA3HL team, and just kind of happened that I ran into the broadcaster before the game, and he was like, hey, you know, if you ever, and he says, if I, there's games where I'm going to need a fill-in guy, so, you know, you have experience, you want to do this? Yeah, absolutely. And so I ended up doing about six to eight games for them each season. I was there in the two years there, and then got really close with all the people in Amarillo after we moved there, meaning my wife got a job there, and we moved down there. <laughs> and same kind of thing just from hockey meeting the people behind the scenes of the Amarillo Bulls there the NAHL same sort of thing where it was like the general manager knew that I'd called hockey and same sort of thing about five or six games a year for them filling in whenever it was needed and just a lot of fun to be up in the booth and there's nothing like it you know it's fun to give you're the eyes for the people at home listening yep. in and in your case you know they do stream the games here for the SPHL but a lot of teams it was audio only and so it was fun to be the eyes for those people at the rink and now you find yourself living here in Alabama, actually, and Birmingham, not the closest SPHL city to you. Uh, you're, you're geographically closer to the Huntsville Havoc, and you haven't been able to make your way down there just yet to see a, a Havoc game, but you have made it over to the Von Braun Center. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting building, really nice concourse and concessions, but kind of weird seating. Like if nobody, if you've never been to the Von Braun, there's about six rows in the lower bowl down there, and then everything else is technically the upper bowl, and Kind of regardless of where you sit, there's a <laughs> railing and banner ads in your way because the one game I saw was UAH up there, the only so hockey, well, I say the second college hockey team south of the Mason-Dixon <laughs> line, but 
Yeah, it's a, it's a unique barn, and if you're ever in the area, it's worth checking out just to go see kind of that screwy setup, and that's part of the beauty of minor league hockey is some of these arenas that they play in is just, if it wasn't minor league hockey, nothing else would come there. And again, we go back to, uh, of course, this is Ron from busleaguehockey.com. It's uh, one of the premier sites for all of minor league hockey coverage, and really I think one of the only sites that fully covers uh, the SBHL and FHL outside of really the box scores. Uh, what is your reasoning for being so passionate about independent minor league hockey? Where does it come from for well, you? You mentioned growing up in Muskegon, and that's what it was. You know, when, from the time that I was born, I'm 31, and I want to say it was really early 90s, so I may have been about two when Muskegon had a team in the then International Hockey League, which was at the time the feeder to the NHL, and they were the Pittsburgh Penguins Farm Club. <laughs> but as that league wanted to get into bigger cities, they took the team from Muskegon and moved it to Cleveland and from there they kept hockey going and they had minor league hockey for 50 years and it after that became the colonial hockey league for a short stretch before becoming the famous and still to this day talked about United Hockey <laughs> League then the IHL yep. 2.0 and now it's the USHL up there but just that's what I grew up on, you know, was going to games like the SPHL. It's not necessarily guys who are going to the NHL yeah. anytime soon, but guys who bust it for 60 minutes a night and play in front of you, guys you see at the bar or restaurants or whatever. <laughs> it's a cool and different side of hockey. They, they're, you find out they're regular guys like you and I rather than, you know, these superstars you only see on TV. And why should people care about a league like the SPHL? Well, I, like I say, it's guys who bust it for 60 minutes a night. They they know they're maybe and likely not going to the NHL, but they're guys who want to play hockey for as long as they can. And just in the first period, you can see that passion out there. The hitting, guys can really shoot it. And just it's good, affordable, family-friendly hockey. You know, a ticket to the Bulls, I think, here in Birmingham is around 15 bucks to start and up in Huntsville, you can get one for maybe like 10 to 12 bucks up there. So it's something that, you know, it's got a lot of goals, fights, and really affordable so families and everybody can go out and see it. And it's, it's well worth your time. And you're living close to Huntsville now. And I know Steve Moulton, the broadcaster for the Huntsville Havoc, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. So who knows, maybe it'll be a similar situation to Amarillo or Montana where next thing you know you'll be at least number two. And if not uh, that, then who knows, maybe a couple years from now, the voice of the Havoc. Put a bug in his ear about him, see maybe <laughs> if I can fill in for him or see if he can catch a cold or something soon to emergency spot voice for him. <laughs> Final, uh, final thing from you here, Ron. Give your give your elevator pitch. Why should people care and why should people read BusLeagueHockey.com? Well, like I brought up earlier, the biggest thing is we're trying to cover the sport from a different angle. We don't want to do game recaps because, like I say, anybody with a computer and Internet connection could look at a box score and write up a story with no quotes or anything like that. But we want to, you know, share the information that doesn't end up in the papers because, like we say, these leagues don't get covered, and that's expansion stuff or off-ice stuff that happens. <laughs> Just like I say, we want to bring something different to the table, and I think that's been really successful and fun for us because, you know, we post those stories about an expansion rumor happening or somebody possibly relocating or the big one lately was Biloxi posting pictures about updating their scoreboard and that puts everybody into a frenzy that's just <laughs> it's coverage you're not getting other places and it's a different side of hockey that i think keeps people into the game but it's more than just numbers well here in the walker family chiropractic intermission interview with ron from bus league hockey ron thank you for coming down tonight thank you for enjoying a great game of marksman hockey here and we hope you enjoy the rest of your night absolutely and hopefully the marksman can get a couple goals here <laughs> that's right we'll be right back here on the marksman radio broadcast network <laughs> 